Hello, welcome to Q&A today, and this is your still Dr. Charles and Dave Fournette. And uh, I am very excited you have joined me. And uh, thanks to Mr. Oren, we have a Q&A today. Uh, well, praise God. I see Nisha. She's on. Love you, sweetie. And we have Chris, we have Ernest, Lizzy, and uh, Stevencia, and uh, we have Ramsey, Princess Lucy, and uh, I'm glad you joined me. We're going to get started with the Q&A. We're going to make it very quick and easy. I'm going to answer the questions, and if you have all the questions, you have to wait and do that later, okay? Um, I need to be able to read and see what kind of questions are being asked today. Um, I'm going to go straight and start with the first one. The question number one is, once a seed is sown and faith is released, once a seed is sown and faith is released, what does the believer do as an action step to harvest the seed? The Bible says, Ecclesiastes chapter 11, it says, In the morning you sow your seed. In the evening you don't stop sowing. You don't withhold your hand. Because you do not know what kind of evil there might be in the world. That means evil might be for one seed or the other seed. But what you do is constant seeds in the ground guarantees you a constant harvest because you don't know what kind of evil might be in the world. So what do you do as a believer after you've sown your seed? You pray for wisdom so that you can have wisdom to have new ideas. God can bless you. The harvest comes in many, many ways. The Bible says he will rebuke the devourers for our sakes. In other words, <clears throat> the enemy coming to attack your finances like damaged cars or accidents or things, those things are eliminated by the power of the Holy Ghost. It's, it's eliminated by the power of God. So you're understanding that you, the way the way God operates, it says He will cause men to bring to your bosom. There are different ways God God operates. It doesn't say sow your seeds and stay in your house. You've got to keep living. You got to do things that you're supposed to do. That's what you're supposed to do. You do what God has called you to do, and I guarantee you, you are going to get a great harvest. And uh, hello, I see Elijah from uh, uh, from Uganda. God bless you. And. Um, uh, okay, Liz, you can send your question now. It's okay. And it says, um, uh, of course, Pastor Maria is on. I'm glad you joined me. So um, the thing is, when you sow your seeds, God will give creative ideas. That could be one way the harvest can come. Or God can stop an accident from happening. There are different ways. You see, he would rebuke the devourer for your sake. Once you plant a seed and do what God has called you to do, remember your tithes. It goes to where you're receiving the most spiritual nourishment. Your offerings is now your seed, and then your alms is what you give to the poor. as loan to God, three things in the kingdom. So your tithes, offerings, and alms, that's what you do. So when you give alms, you, the Bible says anyone that gives to the poor loans to God and get a, a, get a return on that loan from God. So when it comes to your seed, which is your giving beyond your tithes and your offering, given that you are tithing already, the first thing that you do is a tithe is your kingdom tax. Being in the kingdom of God, that provides the security to live in that country or in that kingdom. So your tithes will rebuke the devourers or it's like your police, it pays for the police. So I hope that this helps you. Hello, Ollie, welcome back. We love you and miss you here in Rhode Island. Stephen is on, that's wonderful. So the question is about once a seed is sown and faith is released, what does the believer do as an action step? Action step to harvest that seed. So that's what I'm answering right now. So the most important thing you do is you continue doing what God has called you to do. Listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. He will direct you to where you can go. And then where you are, the times will seize you. And will seize you, the times will bless you. So you understand how that works. God will lead you by His Spirit. He will direct you where to go. And uh, as you're in obedience to God's Word, uh, what's going to happen is you're going to get yourself a great harvest on that seed. And it says seed, time, and harvest. The Bible says, Genesis 8.22, as long as the earth remains. Well, look outside, the earth is still here. Look around you, you are still on earth. So when you're still on earth, what happens is the Bible declares, so long as the earth remains, see, time, and harvest will never stop, will never cease. So you have seed, you have time, 
and then harvest. Now, what do you do? When is the best time to plant a seed? The moment you have a need. This is the problem with most people. I'm going to address this very well. Okay, praise God. And uh, I'm going to address this very, very well. <laughs> he said, I listened to Life Manifesto Simmons online and Total Power, and today I'm preaching to young men. That is wonderful, Elijah. Thank you for that great testimony. I love listening and seeing those great testimonies. Now, I'm talking about once a citizen, what do you do? See, time and harvest. The problem with most people is they need something tomorrow. They want to plant a seed today. They knew they had a need beginning of the month. But they plant the seed end of the month and want a harvest end of the month. Well, the Bible says seed, time, and then harvest. Do you understand that? It says seed, time, and then harvest. But most people just want seed and harvest. No, seed, time, and harvest. So what do you do? The moment you know you have a need, that's when you plant a seed. Because when the need is, re is required, the need is to be met, you have a time period where it will increase, as simple as it is. I hope that helps you a little bit. So in the meantime, between when you know you have a need and you plant the seed immediately, what do you do? The moment you plant that seed, guess what happens? There's a time process where the seed will mature. Every investor knows this. See, your offering or your gift when you sow a seed, it's your investment in the kingdom. Your tithe is your kingdom tax. It rebukes the devourer. That's what a police force does for your sakes. God pours you out a blessing. Now, your offering or your seed, this is the difference. The, the seed is you are planting into the kingdom of God for kingdom purposes, and your seed is where you get your harvest or your return on your investment or on your tithes. In other words, your seeds are going to produce for you some 30, some 60, some 100. It's called investment. Every good investor understands that whenever there's an investment made, you need a time period for that investment to mature. If you don't want to deal with uh, time, then it's called gambling. A gambler is somebody that just wants instant gratification without allowing time for what they are doing to mature. I hope you understand that. I hope this gives you a little more clarity on this, to understand how things work. Okay? So that is done. I see Dali. How are you? Love you, sweetie. Uh, is my grandbaby here yet? I have to, I have to know whether my grandbabies come. Praise God. Now, question number two. I want to make sure I do not miss any question. And I see Apostle Heinrich. Good to see you. I missed you very much. We missed you here in Rhode Island. I am coming to France, which is close to where you are in Belgium. Hopefully you can connect up there. We love you. We love the family. It has been busy, busy, but we, you know we're family, man. I love you, love you, love you. Okay, so let's take another question. I hope this, uh, this question does you a little, a little justice. The point is, what action steps do I take? I go ahead and plan. What do I do? I, I'm led by the vision. I don't wait. I don't wait and say I'm not doing anything. I plant my seeds and I go to work. A farmer knows how to, how to get rid of the weeds around the seeds. A farmer knows how to get rid of the weeds around the seed. What do you do? Hallelujah. The way, how do you get, because the, some people, when they have a seed planted, guess what happens? Weeds come up. What are weeds? Worry. Worry. People worry about the seed. They say, is it coming up here? When you start acting like that, you kill that seed. Leave the seed, please, alone. The seed will grow. If you keep looking for the seed, um, digging up the seed, you kill that seed. Plant the seed, go about living life, doing what you're supposed to do. Get your businesses going interacting with people and great things will keep happening but if you do not do that you're going to dig up that seed and kill that that little seed you need to be able to do that a lot better i hope that this helps you very 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 much okay now let's take up another question what's the best way to find mission sponsors it's very simple <laughs> it's very simple if you want to find people that can sponsor first of all the people that you minister to, let them, the Bible says, if, if, you, if somebody sows to you 
spiritual food, you ought to sow financial blessings to them. That means wherever you have received spiritual nourishment, guess what? Replenish by sowing and investing in that vision that has blessed you. That's very simple. I mean, that's called being a partner in the grace of that person. So one way you can find, you can find um, somebody to sponsor, you tell people that, that, you, that you've helped. The principles of the kingdom. You said, I need to do this. Share the vision. Remember, every vision has a provision. For every vision, there is a provision. So what do you do? You want to be able to get the provision out, and God will do the rest. Amen? You get the vision, and the provision will come. If you project the vision, those that you've helped would know that you've helped them, and they're going to release seeds in that direction to become partners in that vision. Another thing you can do is you can have other... Um, or the, you see, I always tell people, you don't have to go to your mentor to go and get that. You can get it from your protégés and things because you are investing in them. They ought to return that good favor so that they can help move the vision forward and you can be a tremendous blessing to a lot of people. I hope that this helps a little bit. Every vision has a provision. You have to always understand that, and that's always a kingdom principle that we operate by. So I hope that this is helpful to you. And um, the other question is, how does one, number three question, how does one deal with ministers and ministries that was, that was one, ha once helpful, but now there's the shift of passion, of ministry presentation, and assignment scope? Is it okay to move on and find a middle ground to continue to work with those ministries and ministers? Could be an option. The point is, you are supposed to you are supposed to know what direction you're going you've got to know what, you, what direction you're going not you can't run with everybody that says oh let's run you've got to run with people going in the direction you're going some people are running a marathon you got to know what race you're running you run with the people that are running with you you can't run uh, you can't run sprint when the marathon is what's running so in other words learn to find the people that are running with you like for example, if you want, we, our vision is the world. Not some people that they just want to do something local, that's fine. We do local and global, so we're not really stuck in just one area. We are covering all bases. Our mission is ministering love that heals our whole hurting world. So those are the things we want to do. I hope that that helps you very much. Okay, so that means uh, the question is, is it okay to move on and find a middle ground to continue to work? With those ministries sometimes you have to move on if the vision is, is if your vision is beyond that i said it's a very good thing to to look for a place where you can actually flourish and do what you're called to do remember this it, it, if you're planted in a place is one thing because for you to be planted there that means your vision will come underneath the big picture but if god god's not going to plant you in a place where the vision is too small for what he has given you to do He's going to plant you in a place where they have a big enough vision for yours to fit in. It's as simple as it is. God is not unfair. God is a just God. Hallelujah. So he knows if he's put the world in your heart, he can put you in a place where all the thing about is just to do church. You've got to go to the place where you're actually moving in the dimension. You want to go to the world. You start from a local place. You serve. You go to your Judea, to, to your Jerusalem, Judea, and to the uttermost part of the earth. You've got to start somewhere and work your way out. So that's what you do. I hope that this is helpful to all of you. Hallelujah. So you got, you got the point now. Praise God. And this other one is, is it okay for a woman to marry again if her husband leaves her and marries another woman? I know it's something about divorce. It is messy. It, you know, God hates it. And, um, but God, God, the only reason God permits it is because of the hardness of the hearts of the people. Because it's very, I mean, it's very painful. It, it leaves a shot of people everywhere. So, but God's best is very simple. God's best is to bring restoration to the people and let them fulfill a purpose beyond just a marriage. That means if you want to be, if you want to remarry, you know, just ask for God's grace. God, God's very merciful. God's very merciful. And he's going to give you chances so that you can get the things straight based on his word. And it is, that's why you have to counsel people correctly before they get married. You have to understand purpose. You have to know why, why you're getting together. You know, some people, you just... You just go by feelings, but it don't go by purpose. You know, if you're going to get married, you see, if you have two people with two different vision, there'll be a division or division, two vision. They can't stick together. The Bible declares that can two 
can two go together, work together, except there being an agreement. Those are the things you do before you get married. But if you're already in the situation and there's a divorce and things, and we don't want to victimize you a second time. God is full of mercy. God is very full of mercy. You see, the Catholic have a thing that they call um, so an annulment. That means they'll cancel it as it never happened. That means if the foundation is wrong, then it really was wrong. They look for a reason why they do that. But you see, God hates divorce. So should we. So if people are married, if they can work it out, that's the best thing. But we don't want people staying on a roof and get killed because some religious bigot has told them, well, you can't do this. We don't advocate people to leave either. We tell people, you've got to know how the Holy Spirit will lead you into those things. I hope that helps you very, very much. Hallelujah. See, everything what I do, what we talk about is how can Jesus be revealed in the situation? That's what's very important. Follow the fire of God. Follow what God has called you to do. Okay? Now, I'll keep it open. I'll keep it open. I want to take some questions from all of lo lovely folks. Make sure the questions are short and to the point. And I'm going to take a few questions now. I'm awaiting, hallelujah, I'm awaiting your your questions now. Uh, if not, our Q and a Q&A is, is over. <laughs> uh, Mr. Owen is not going to bail you guys out now, okay? You know, you guys, you got to be thanking Oren and sending him some love and some, some, some chocolate and stuff. He got me into this today. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's go on. Let's roll. And um, questions. I want to take some questions from some of you. I'll keep it open right now because I know that um, I, I had mentioned that you have to send ahead of time. But um, I wasn't planning on doing something. Uh, I just, I, I, we have to get, move beyond that now. Okay? So let's take some questions. Let's take some questions. Um, I want you to shoot some questions to me. I want to take them up right online. You can just write it right on the, on the page um, in the comment section. I want to be able to look at some of those questions, and then we can provide some answers for you. Okay? I hope that this is very helpful to everybody. Um, let's see. Okay, let me see, let me see. Praise God. Praise God, praise God, praise God. So, do you have scriptures to use if woman was left by her husband? Uh, do you have scriptures to, to, first of all, the Bible says if a woman, it, the Bible tells you very clearly that, you know, some, it tells you that if there's a divorce, that if a woman leaves, uh, if a husband leaves a wife, it tells you, if you go to the New Testament, the certain scripture tells you, it said, if she stays with an unbeliever, most of the talk is about being in, unequally yoked. The Bible says don't be unequally yoked. So most of the thing they were talking about is, now let's say if they're unequally yoked, it talks about you can be separated from the person. It tells you that. But if you're equally yoked, what does that mean? That means you're moving in the same vision, in the same flow. That means they will have no reason to be for that to even happen. It's almost like a moot point. In other words, you know, if you're equally yoked, you won't even think about a divorce. It's as simple as it is. <laughs> okay, I'm seeing all of you guys that are, that are trying to... Uh, we don't do bribery and corruption here. You can't bribe Orange to keep doing this. <laughs> oh, my goodness. We are going to be in France in March. I see, I see Duke is on. <laughs> the Duke is in the house. I see Blake is on. You guys were just awesome on Sunday during the service and yesterday also. You guys, Duke, Blake, Johnny, all the worship team, you guys were just amazing. Hallelujah. I just want to say I love all of you guys. So, um, <clears throat> Maria, I'll give you some scriptures later on just to uh, sort those things out. Because, you see, God, God is not the author of confusion. He likes clarity when you, when you get things done. So how, what would cause one to operate normally after a supernatural experience like power school of miracles? <laughs> I don't know. If I knew, if I knew. <laughs> you must, you, the thing is, there is no way you come to power school and return to normal. It's just not possible. If you return to normal, it's a choice you make, and there's nothing left that God is going to do. If you're looking for just a spiritual fix, uh, it's, that's a different story. But when you come to power school, there's a permanent shift that takes place. You can go back after power school. 
And uh, Sharon says, um, can you talk about fasting? Yes, what do you want to know? Uh, let me know. If you want to know about fasting, Isaiah tells you the reason for fasting is to break the bonds of wickedness. That means daily you're dealing with the world. If you're going to start a ministry, you're going to start something, it's a good thing to fast, to hear God clearly. The purpose of fasting, fasting is never to change God. God says, I'm the Lord God and I change not. The Bible says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. The Holy Ghost is still the same. The Word of God is the same. Believers still the same. Fasting changes you. God is unchanging. His word is unchanging. If there's any change, guess what? It's you that is changing when you fast. So when you fast, you are bringing the body under so that your spirit can hear God. Some people, their God has become their bellies. Their bellies, their God. So most of them just eat, eat, eat. They don't think about consecrating themselves. You see, I like to consecrate myself. One way of consecration is fasting. Another way of consecration is just taking yourself away from everybody else. That's, that's what you do. Consecration means being set apart, which is the word basically setting you up for holiness as the same thing. But I hope you understand what I'm talking about today. Okay? <laughs> okay? So fasting, one thing it does is fasting does not give you more power. Fasting only helps you hear God better. When you have the power of the Holy Ghost, is the power of the Holy Ghost. You don't have uh, the power of the Holy Ghost version 2.0. No, these are some of the things, the teaching that comes into the church, and people say, I need to fast to get more power. No, you just need to pray for revelation of how much power God has already put in you. You need a better revelation. The more revelation you have of the Word of God, the more you're going to operate in the power of God. Case in point, we get a lot of results. We don't waste time. We just cut loose and great things happen, okay? And here, as Chris says, how do you discover the diamonds within you to put action to them? One thing is, very simple, look around you. Everything around you is set up for you to win. One thing I do is I look around, I see a need, and I feel it. I look for a hurt and heal it. See, when I see the hurt, what in me comes out to fix it? If I see financial problems, I think solution. The diamonds in me comes when I identify problems. Whenever there are problems, you discover your diamonds because I can tell you every problem there's a solution. So you have to learn how to do that and it's going to help you. Okay. How is it that that there are the women that wanted America and just told her not to give it to the children? Okay. Make your, make your questions very short um, because I cannot see the rest of that question. Um, I cannot see the rest. I cannot see the rest of the question. Praise God. Praise God. Okay. I cannot see the rest of the question. So it says, um, it says, you shouldn't give it to to the children. To the you should not give the children's bread uh, bread to the dogs. In other words, it's not that Jesus didn't want to heal the woman. It's Jesus wanted to reveal something about that story. You see, sometimes when Jesus is teaching. You have to understand how the Jewish rabbis will teach. They will teach sometimes by example or sometimes to draw out. They want to draw out a meaning out of it. He says, come stand in the middle, stretch out your hand. He's trying to show something. When he says to a man, is it, is it, he says to the people, is it wrong to do good on the wrong day? See, he's trying to teach a lesson. He's trying to bring spiritual truth out of a situation. So the same thing too, he brought this woman and when this woman came, he said, my daughter is sick. And what did he say? He said, we don't give this because she was a Samaritan woman. Now, the Samaritans, the people from Samaria were considered like a low caste and an outcast. And there were people that people did not talk to. The Jews did not have anything dealings with them. In other words, they were not considered. So the, they, they were not considered anything as important as that. So in other words, they had an issue. What was the issue? The issue was the religious... Uh, uh, the religious establishment wanted to condemn them. The same way with the woman that was caught in adultery. You know, Jesus forgave her. You know, this, this are the things that Jesus always wanted to reveal the Messiah's, the Messiah's presence in the place. So in other words, hallelujah. In other words, um, talking about the woman and uh, the, the children's bread, healing is the children's bread. But when the woman said, because Jesus is trying to reveal faith instead of religion. He said, he said, we don't give the bread 
to the children's bread to the dogs. The woman said, even the dogs can eat the crumbs that falls from the children's table. Not the adult's table, from the children's table. Even the dogs, the dogs, the baby dogs can eat, the, the puppies can eat that healing that comes from the children. In other words, she did not allow the fact that the religious people told her she couldn't get it, stop her faith from being activated. And uh, no wonder Jesus says, I've never seen faith like this. He says, great is your faith. He revealed what was in her. When she, he made the statement, he pulled the religious thing. And then when they said, okay, they have fulfilled that, guess what? She broke through with faith, showing the difference between faith and religion. I hope this helps you a little bit. Uh, this one says, uh, this is Donna, God bless you. Have Ruth. He said, I left God back. I don't hear Holy Spirit talking to me. You don't hear the Holy Spirit talking to you? And so what's the question? I don't know what the question is. Um, let me know what the question is, and uh, I'll be able to do that. I'll be able to help you. Okay, let's go to the next question. Uh, put your questions up quickly on the screen, and uh, I think um, you guys are running out of questions. Okay? Let's go to the next question. Let's go to the next question. Praise God. With that kind of faith, all things are possible. Absolutely correct. Jesus was amazed at the faith of this woman. He said, you see, when God, when God gets amazed at your faith, that tells me it, he, he is he's going to give you whatever you're looking for. So for me, I am very excited about that. When I read those stories, I get excited. I get excited. I hope this helps you guys a little bit, get you guys on track to win. Okay? Now, let's see. Two more questions, and we'll wrap it up. Quickly, I want to make sure I can read those things. Um, you guys, courtesy of Mr. Owen, you guys got me into a little extra time, okay? But I love talking to you guys anyway. Let's go for it. <laughs> Rami says, that's how you know power score of miracles to success. We are questionless. <laughs> I think so too, son. <laughs> All the questions are answered in power school. Now you just manifest. I get it. I get it. <laughs> I get that very well. <laughs> if you're still soaking and reviewing, <laughs> you guys are so sweet. I love you guys. Yeah, you can tell this on my family. They know what they're talking about. We have inside information. How, how is fear different from doubt from an angle of faith? You see, fear, you know, fear, the difference between fear, if the Bible says perfect love cast away fear. You see, fear creates doubt. Fear actually creates doubt. If you are afraid, and doubt also can become a starting point for fear. If you are doubtful, if, if you have fear, you don't trust. You don't trust. So that's one of the things that happens when you have, I see Edgar is on here. I'm glad you joined me. Okay, thank you for joining today. Now we're talking about the difference between fear and doubt. Fear is paralyzing. So is doubt. Doubt causes you, see, it's harder to doubt than to have faith because you have to reject good news and believe in bad news. That's one thing I think about doubt. Doubting means you refuse to accept as true what God has said or what anybody has said. You refuse to accept the truth. In other words, you reject the truth and accept a lie. Now, fear is a spirit. Fear comes to paralyze you. When it comes on you, it causes you not to see the finality of what God has said. That's why the Bible says God has not given you the spirit of fear. And the Bible says we have the same spirit of faith. So faith is a spirit. Fear is a spirit. It's very simple. So when somebody has doubt, is most likely why people have doubt is because of experiences. That's one of the things that creates doubts. You don't have a negative experience, so the doubt that is going to happen. So, but faith breaks through that and said, I'm going to trust the word of God and I'm going to believe what God says is now. And uh, Nimet says, I am dealing with unforgiving and bitterness. Does one have to reach out to the one who caused the pain? No, the thing is this, you can, or you, sometimes you might, sometimes you might not. What is the key? I give you the key. Is reaching out to them a key to solving the problem? Do they have an issue with you? If somebody has something against you, or you have something against somebody, you go to them and tell them, 
uh, please forgive me for feeling this way, but I have nothing against you. I was holding some bitterness against you. Please, you forgive me, even though maybe what I did to you injured you. But you choose to be the bigger person and ask for ask them to forgive you for having bitterness. That that's the higher way of doing things. We see another question here. Most of you, when I'm reading your questions, I, that's why I like it sent ahead of time. That way we can read everything in full. I'm reading half the question. I don't know what the other half is. Okay. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Okay. Let's look at this. How does one manage resistance within a team? How does one manage? Why is there resistance? See, the only thing that people resist is change. So if there's resistance, have you made yourself clear or are you forcing some things through? You see, the problem with, with, with resistance, resistance means a pressure is being applied that the people are not aware of. It's, if I said, I'm going to change everything, people resist it. But if I tell them why the change is happening, I reduce the resistance to the change. So there are a lot of things you can do that can remove resistance. How do you manage resistance? You don't manage resistance. You eliminate resistance. How? By giving them the full picture of what is about to be done. Showing them the benefit. Showing them, you know, they, you, you want to make the cost-benefit analysis. Say, it's going to cost us this much, and this is what's going to benefit us. You see, if we don't do it, this is the price we're going to pay. If we do it, this is what we're going to say. You give them the best and the worst case scenario. If you're doing it this way, it's going to work. People, when they're supplied with better information, people gravitate towards what's better. But if you want to ram things through, you, you're going to make resistance all the time, all day long. I hope that this helps you guys a little bit. Okay, so let's keep moving forward. I like the team is coming back on. Two more questions. I'm being generous today. Come on, let's move on. Next question. I want to make sure I know everybody's on board. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Okay, I want to make sure everybody's on board. Now, can you give advice in getting over fear and doubt? It's easy. Perfect love casts away fear. Doubt is removed when you trust the one who speaks the word of God, God himself. Amen. So it's simple enough. I trust God, so I have no doubt about what he's telling me. Fear is gone because love is what rules in my heart. Because the love of God, is the Bible says fear has torment. The love of God has been shed abroad in my heart by the Holy Spirit. A root says, my question to is that, can I make the Spirit of God talk to me, tell me things to come? You don't make the Spirit of God talk to you. He will talk to you. That's his job. He will love to talk to you. You see, when I'm speaking, it's him speaking through me. I never think about Holy Spirit, I want you to talk to me. I just said, I yield it to you. Speak, I'm listening. Simple, you build a relationship with the Holy Spirit, and that's what fellowship is all about. I hope that this helps you very much. Okay? Okay. I'm looking at some of the questions now. Where to work, uh, where to work and um, do what you have never done before? Just trust. Um, I don't know what... I'm trying to get that in context. Maybe I missed something while I was looking at a camera. Okay. Now, what else? What else? Let's have one more question, and we can wrap it up. How do you do? You, what management? I've already answered that question already. So um, that question was answered earlier on in the broadcast. So you have to review it. Go back and listen to it. Is it that? Share some strategy to turn your fate loose. Oh my goodness! How to turn your fate loose? That's a topic for next week. How to turn your faith loose. Okay, that's, thank you for giving me a good topic to teach on that. Okay? Okay, let me see. Sharon Moses, I, lo I love for you to talk about marriage. Some people think, some people, uh, some more, please. Now, marriage is bonus. You see, men and women were not created for marriage as the primary purpose, but marriage came in because God said it was not good for men to, to be alone. The purpose for marriage is fulfilling divine purpose. You see, the loving, the fellow, the, the feelings, and all those things is great. It's not just a procreation, but also fulfilling purpose, subduing the earth, managing the earth. is about management. That's what we were created for. But marriage is bonus to have somebody that shares in that vision that you're called to do. You're not called just to bear kids. No, you're not called just to become a tag along you're called to go along with whoever you're married to so if you are just uh, a servant to somebody you're supposed to be 
next to the person and building things together. You're not supposed, you're not supposed to be at the feet of the person. No, 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 no. You're supposed to be from the side of the person working hand in hand. I hope that helps you. Maybe we're going to do a whole marriage seminar, but not today. <laughs> now, how, how can I get the teaching on the cost of offenses? Go back to the old Daily Boost. We already talked about those things. Those things will help you. Okay? And we have Kathy. Welcome on board. Now, Nimeth, you can get some of those things on. I talked about offenses a couple of months ago. Check it out. It will be a blessing to you. And I know you're going to like it. Okay? So, I think, um, let me see how much time we have. I think we have time for one more question. I see Kathy's on. And we are just about to wrap it up. One more question, folks, and then we can wrap it up. I know that we have a full day ahead of us. I want to maximize that. Okay, so let's see what questions we have. One more. I'm being generous. I'm being generous. Okay. I want to make sure you are. So I'm going to stare at the screen and look at you and just tell you I love you. And then guess what? You're going to give me a good question. Give me something that will shake everything up. Okay, good. Let's go for it. <laughs> uh, Princess Lucy says, I surrender. Okay, we disarm you with love. <laughs> I say, Patrick, welcome on board. Drushin, God bless you. I know that God is doing great things with you. You know, God has called you to do great things. Trust in that calling, and God will do the rest. <laughs> I love to have fun. So a uh, good, good, good thing to do is go and revisit the old daily boost. And also, folks, we are still on the mission for Kenya. We need all your support. We want to make sure we can take as much uh, of the things we want to take over to them. Remember, we're trying to sponsor um, a radio station. We have a lot of things we want to get done, and I uh, look forward to doing some things with you guys, okay? Okay, Princess Lucy, what questions do you have? Let your question be the last one, okay? Speak or forever hold your peace. Okay, let's go for it. <laughs> Okay, I'm waiting for the question. Let's go for it. Can I come back to Ara? I need to search for my free house. <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> come back to Rhode Island. Sure you can. Uh, this is home. I know you folks enjoyed it very much. I did. And that's, that's more of a personal question. Uh, okay. Teresa de Boer, is it de Boer or du Bois? I don't know how you pronounce that. Is it the French way or the American way? Hallelujah. <laughs> Karibu sana. <laughs> I love you guys so, so much. <laughs> okay, come on now. Okay, one question and I can wrap it up. I know we have had a long day. Hallelujah. And uh, speaking in tongues. <laughs> You're your own. Ask Pastor Lisa. She'll help. <laughs> oh, we have. Uh, is it send it? Send uh, is it send this one? God bless you. Watching from Cape Town, beautiful Cape Town, South Africa. Wow, the Cape of Good Hope, looking and shining down on Cape Town. Praise God. I hope that you were blessed today, sweetie. I love you. I'm glad you joined us. Hallelujah. Praise God. So let's have the last question. <laughs> okay, I like that. King is rolling. Yes, indeed. Karibu sana. Um, if, you, if you want to contact me, you can. Uh, this is Q&A. This is I heard Nadine. Bless you, sweetie. Great job you do, Nadine. All through the power school, I want to acknowledge you publicly you're amazing she is not just only a model but a model believer a model daughter great great does great things and uh, <laughs> i love she runs the cameras she takes pictures she loves on people she does a lot of things Nijin, i love you baby i love you very much i'm glad to have you part of the team here in rhode island we appreciate what you do praise god and uh, I see you ladies, uh, it's an inside joke between Pastor Lizzie and uh, Princess Lionel. <laughs> I know the joke. 
You're on your own. Okay. Now, if you want to ask the question, I'm going to wrap it up. Okay. We have to. We have so much in power school. <laughs> Okay, I cannot get the miracle. Oh, the miracle videos you guys watch. Maybe we can put it online somewhere. How do one build a passionate, a, a passionate ministry? It has to start with a fire in you. You've got to know what you're called to do. So it starts with you. You have to have a fire in your belly and run with it. And those around you must have clarity of vision to know what they're involved with. And you have passionate people left and right. Share the vision. You, know, you, you, you share the, the dream and build a team, as simple as it is. So you want to build a passionate, a, a passionate ministry uh, team, you've got to have the people all buy into what you're doing. That's more for good leadership teaching. <laughs> oh, praise God. I hope that you guys are enjoying yourself. Could God change his mind about his promises? Impossible. God cannot change his mind about his promises. All of his promises are yes, and in him there are amen. You see, the problem with most people is they don't know how to appropriate the promises of God. God never changes his mind. If something doesn't happen, it's not because God changed. It's not because his promises changed. It's because we refuse to change, to align ourselves with God. We are supposed to be changed. The Bible says, be transformed or be changed by changing your thinking. Our mind has been renewed daily through the word of God. So those are the kind of things that you're going to do. To cause the word of God to come alive in you. I see Myra, my daughter. How are you? Love you. We miss you here at the power school. I thought you'd come to the power school. And we have Oluchi. God bless you. I'm glad you join us. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> I see we're all together in this now. I think we have solved the problem in the back room. <laughs> okay, I hope all of you are enjoying today. And since we have no more questions, um, I'm going to just pray a blessing upon you, and except if you have to give me a good question right away, I can answer it. But in the absence of any questions, hallelujah. You see, you have too much bass or bass. What is that? Praise God. Hallelujah. We want to make sure we can get this thing done right. Okay. Um, say, um, what are we doing? Yes, there's a... We are supposed to align ourselves with God. Yes, we are supposed to align ourselves with the Word of God. The Bible says, the Bible says, faith without action is dead. That means you say you believe God's Word, then you're going to do what God says. As simple as it, God is not going to change for you. You're going to change for God. So that's how you get it done, okay? Well, I'm done for the day. I'm going to pray with all of you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just release, I release the grace, the glory, the blessing. I release that love portion to them right now in the name of Jesus. Let it ignite another dimension of your glory in their lives. Thank you, Lord, for everyone that has watched us today. Let this become a season of celebration. Thank you, Lord. They will celebrate and they will be celebrated. In Jesus' name, amen. Please don't forget to sow a seed to the gospel. You want to be part of our team going to Kenya. If you cannot come, if you cannot come with us, plant a seed, and I believe that God is going to release something to you this weekend. Get ready for unlimited, unlimited glory, okay? I want to say I love all of you. I want to say I love all of you, and good things are happening again. I know it is a new day. God bless you, and I'll see you guys very soon tomorrow.